the biggest phone numbers. So what is that exactly? So oftentimes you may uh, not have a calculator. So how do you deal with big and small numbers? We're going to show you how to do it. It involves scientific notation. It's basically a system that uh, condenses a value to something more manageable, and then you do some math with it, and it becomes a lot easier to handle, especially if you don't have a calculator. But before we un can do scientific notation, we need to understand what significant figures are, because the most common tendency for a student or anybody when you do a calculation, you calculate it, you see like 10 numbers, so you write all 10 numbers. Not all 10 of those numbers are significant. They're not important. You're not supposed to record all of them. You are not accurate enough to measure to that point. But the tendency is just to write everything because no one has told you otherwise. So what we're going to talk about today is that you need to try identifying which your numbers are important, which ones are not. They're pretty simple to do. It really comes down to whether the zero is significant or not. Because for significant figures, Anything that's non-zero is significant. So what the heck does non-zero even mean? Numbers one through nine is significant. So anytime you see numbers one through nine, they are significant. Pretty straightforward. So the question is, when the heck are zero significant? This is the only other value you have, right? Well, zeros are significant if they're between two numbers. So what the heck does that mean? Let's say we have a thousand and one. These zeros are between two numbers, so they become significant. If I wrote this, these zeros are not significant, but here they are. Why is that? Because it's called the sandwich effect. You have one, two, three, four, six figs. Because the zeros are between two numbers, I could do nine, zero, nine. That's three significant numbers. I could do seven with four zeros and a seven. That's six significant numbers. So anytime a zero is between two numbers, one through nine, they're significant. Pretty straightforward. Zero is significant if they follow a number and a decimal. What the heck does that mean? If I wrote this, how many significant figures do you see? Well, first off, your decimal point, in case you did not realize this, is at the end. Whenever you don't see a decimal point written in a scenario, it's all the way at the end. That's the way it works. So here, I have just one significant number. Why? Because these zeros are placeholders. Same thing if I did this. These zeros are not significant. They're just placeholders. You don't write them down in your answer. So what the heck are they significant in these formats? Well, if I did this, this zero becomes significant. So I technically have two significant numbers here. Why is that? Well, these zeros follow a decimal point, right? These three here that I ignored but they did not follow a number. Once they follow a decimal point and a number, has to be both, not just one or the other, then they become significant. So decimal point, number, now my zero is significant. I could put all these zeros, they're all significant now. So now I, in this situation, I have one, two, three, four, five significant numbers, including the seven. If I did this, one, two, three, four significant numbers. So when a zero falls a decimal point and a number, then everything, all the zeros you're seeing are significant. So they have to fall both. That's the key feature. Um, before the number, you know, nothing happening. But as soon as you go after a number and a decimal, boom, they become significant. That takes you to the last scenario. When a number comes before a decimal, everything's significant. So going back to that 700 example, what if we did this? Guess what? Everything you're seeing is significant. Why? Because the number is in front of the decimal. It just works. So anytime you see a number in front of the decimal, everything you're seeing is significant. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six significant numbers. I could do, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven significant numbers. So that's how that works. So that's how you determine significant numbers. Now, why do we need to know that? Because that's going to help us to write numbers in scientific notation. So what is scientific notation? It's a way of writing a very big number in simple form. So 36,000 can be written as 3.6 times 10 to the fourth. This value is called the coefficient. And this is called my exponent. So how the heck do I determine these two, you ask? Pretty straightforward. Your goal is to only have one number, one through nine, to the left of the decimal point. That is it. That's your mission in this. So right side of notation, you can only have one number, numbers one through nine only, 
to 11 decimal points. Zero does not count. You cannot go zero point anything. I can't go 0 0.6 times 10. No, 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 bad, bad. So here, where's my decimal point? Remember, if you don't see it, see it written, it's at the end. That's just always the case. So how many times do I have to move it to get one number to the left? One time, two times, three times, four times. Each time you move it to the left, your exponent goes up by one. So you start at 10 to the zero, in case you're wondering. Each time you move to the left, it goes up by one. So that's how I got 10 to the fourth, because I've moved it four times to the left. If I moved it to the right, and we'll go over these scenarios in a second, Let's say we did this. Where's your decimal point now? Here, right? Where's my number? Over here. So I need to move it to the right instead of the left, right? Each time you move it to the right, your exponent goes down. So this would be 7 times 10 to negative 3. And for those wondering why not include this zero, it's not significant. That's the whole point of this. So the key to standard notation is this. You can only have one number to left decimal point. That is your mission. As long as you stick to that mission, you should be fine. All right, so let's look at some numbers bigger than one. So 40,000, where the heck is my decimal point for this? Well, if you notice, all the way at the left. Sometimes I have to move it one, two, three, four. What do I get? Four times 10 to the fourth. Zeros are placeholders. You don't write them. If you put 4.0, you're wrong. Because that implies there's two significant numbers. How many do you see before you even played with this? One. Remember, zero is only significant if they fall a number and a decimal point, or they're between two numbers. Nothing's going on here. All right, 50.0. A little tougher, because the decimal point's already in between the value. So remember, you start 10 to the zero, you move it one to the left. These zeros are significant, because this number is in front of the decimal point. So it's 5.00 times 10 to the first. Our right, next one. Oh, wow, it's already got one number to the left decimal point. So guess what? You don't do anything. And because you're not doing anything, it's 4.00 times 10 to the zero. Because you do not move the decimal point. For those looking at it going like, wait, isn't that going to be zero when you multiply? No, no. 10 to the zero power is equal to one. So what's one times 4.00? That's right, four. That's where it came from. All right, numbers less than one. So where do I have to move the decimal point? One, two, three. Four. Four to the right. Remember, left up. When you go left, your exponent goes up. Here, it's going to be the opposite. Down, right. There you go, right down. Maybe that's more proper English in this one to match up with that. So anytime you go to the right, your exponent goes down. So you start at 10 to the 0. You go down how many times? Four times. So four times 10 to the negative 4. Once again, zeros are not important. Because they're not significant, so you don't write them. Next one, how many significant numbers do you see? Two, six, and zero. So it's going to be 6.0 times 10 to the what? Well, how many times do you have to move the decimal point? You have to move it over one. Where's my decimal point? It's the super small right now. It's missing in action. There you go. One, two, three. So it's going to be 6.0 times 10 to negative three. For this one, how many significant numbers do you see? Three of them, right? One, two, three. Gives me 7.00 times to negative three. So that's how you do it. Let's try some more. How many significant figures and write the sign of the notation? Okay, first off, zeros are all placeholders. One, two, three, four, five times 10 to the fourth power. Here, one significant number, eight. One, two, three, four. Move it to the right, so 10 to the negative four. Here, one, two, 7.6. You move it to the right, number right down, negative two. Here, one, two, three. Three point two. Move it to the right, to the left. So it's 10 to the third power. How many six figs here? One. Remember, these are all placeholders, decimal points at the end, because you don't see it. One, two, three, four. So six times 10 to the fourth. Here, one, two, three, 
four, you move this to the right. So nine times 10 to negative four. Here, one, two, three, four. Remember, one number, not two. If you did 45, you are wrong. Times 10 to the fourth. Here, one, two, three, nine point eight times 10 to the negative three. Here, one, two. Now, how many six figures do you guys see? One, two, three, four. So 5.000 0, 0 times 10. Remember, you move to the right, negative 2. Here, how many the figures? 3. So that's what we have in your answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 7.89 times 10 to the fifth. Now let's do multiplication and division. So now that you have a basic understanding of standard notation and sig figs, how do you math with them? All right, so let's say we're trying to multiply numbers. So when you have a standard notation already, and this is what you need to do is first put in standard notation, then do the math. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But let's talk about what the math really is. You multiply the coefficients and you add the exponents. And that's all it is. So two times four times, and then you just add the exponents five and three which gives you 10 to the 8. That's all you got to do. Multiply the coefficients, add your exponents. There's your incentive notation. Division, you divide the coefficients. So you divide 8 by 4, because those are the coefficients, right? And you subtract 6 minus 2, which gives us 2 times 10 to the 4. So you guys are probably looking at this and saying, when is this ever applicable? Let's take a look. Let's see if you have to do these without a calculator. So how the heck would you do it? So what I'm going to do is write all these standard notations. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 8 times 10 to the 6. Well, that's a little bit easier to work with. Times 4 times 10 to the 2nd. So 4 times 8, 32. Times 10 to the 6 plus 2, 8 power. Now, the only thing you have to do at the end of this math is make sure your answer is standard notation. It's 32 times 10 to the 8th standard notation. The answer is no. You can only have one number to the left decimal point. So I'm going to move it once to the left. 3.2. Now, I started 10 to the 8th, not 10 to the 0 this time. That's why it's a little different. So you move it to the left one time, so your exponent goes up by 1. You start at 8, and you go up 1, so 10 to the 9th. There's your answer. All right, let's try this one. So I'm going to do multiplication again. So 2.5 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So correct sig fig was 2 times 2.5. That's right, 5. And then you add your exponents. 5 and 5 gives you 10 to the 10. There's your answer. So time of notation, because there's only one number to the left decimal. Remember, if you don't see it, it's at the end. That's always the case. All right, next one. Division is a little tougher. So what I always suggest is making the top number, which you're dividing, um, two digits. So instead of making this 4.5 and dealing with decimals, which I don't like, what I'm going to do instead is go 1, 2, 3, 4. That's what I usually stop at when I'm doing of notation, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make it 45. So 45 times 10. How many times do you move it to get 45? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6, right? Divided by 9 times 10 to the third. Now look what it was before. Scary, scary calculation. Now look what it looks like. 45. Now I'll rewrite it for you a different way so you can see a little bit better. Look how easy that math becomes. A scary number became easy. Sign of equation is your best friend. We don't have calculators. What's 45 divided by 9? Well, that's 5. Subtract the exponents. I always suggest writing this out. Negative 6 minus 3. Why do you not want to do this in your head? Because most people do this in their head like, oh, negative 6 and positive 3. That's going to be negative 3. No, 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 no. no that's not how it works. Because you got to flip the signs. That's how math really works. 5 times 10 to negative 9. Think about it. You're taking this number, 
and you're dividing by 9,000, which you're implying your number is just 0 0.005. That makes zero sense. It's like me saying I have a dollar, I'm going to split it between 100 people, and each of them gets $100. Makes no sense. Just do the math. Do that extra step of writing it out. Don't do it in your head. That's where bad things happen. All right, this one, division. Remember, what do I say? Keep the top one as two digits, so 49 times 10 to the second. This becomes 7 times 10 to the first. What's 49 divided by 7? Wow, it's an easy number to deal with. Subtract the exponents. 2 minus 1. There's no negative, so real easy math. It's going to be 10 to the first. And the last one, uh, I can make this 1.6. I can make this 16. If 16 times 2 is easier for you, then go 16 times 10 to the fourth times 2 and get your answer. It'll be the same answer, but I'm going to go 1.6 just because I want to stay consistent. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 to so 1.6 times 10 to the 5, all of the zeros are placeholders, times 2 times 10 to the first was 2 times 1.6, 3.2 times 10 to the 6. Now, let's say you did do that 16 I was mentioning earlier. So it would be 16 times 10 to the 4th, because you're not going to move it over uh, 5 times. You're going to move it over 4 times only, right? Manipulate the number to make it easier for yourself to deal with. If you can do 1.6, do 1.6. If you can do 16, do 16. Whatever floats your boat. Because watch, times 10 to the first, this becomes 32 times 10 to the fifth. And you're like, wait, that's not the same answer. But look, not the same mutation. Once to the left gives us 3.2 times 10 to the sixth. So this is how you deal with very small and very big numbers using scientific notation. So hopefully you have a better idea how to manage those now.